Nigerians are expected to seek out the best. Two words to describe the activity. The European Unity Forum is coming to you on Be the first to know. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential We break the news. Men in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live I wish you would as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV Primetime News. A 24 hour news station. Thanks for joining us again. For a while now, we kick-started our campaign against violence before, during, and after elections, especially at a time where we saw the General Muhammadu Buhari and Mr. President in hog. You know, quite interesting what politicians can do before and after elections. So if you dare kill yourself, they might eventually just throw a party uh, that you will never get to hear about. But let's kick-start from the streets in Lagos where we spoke with some Nigerian youths and find out their opinion as regards all of us. Because person go kill me, I go kill my home before I go die. Because they kill us a job before us they kill, uh, they kill uh, what they call MKO. Yeah, some people don't go for this country. We be say be strong of Yoruba land. If you reach Yoruba land now, no elders. Say now, Basaja won't cause elders. It's not our elders. I bet you know, be one cause in our elders. It's not our elders. But so, some people will strong for Yoruba land. We be strong, man. You don't die. You understand me? But the thing where they happen now, now only God, they know the place where you go land. But may God help us, Nigeria. May everybody they pray. If you want to happen, may I know my. No, wala. <laughs> if you have no wala, so my people do because I'm your do I died. I stand where we I stay. And now you will be, you will be, uh, wait, 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 you will be office man. You know, if you call what will happen, but if you will happen, I did not pay no wala. Uh, uh, what do they call that? MK Odana, then die because of me and you. Thank you, thank you. You understand me? But if you happen, no wala. Avoiding pre-election pre, pre, pre violence, I think one of the things that is going to help is uh, uh, communication to the people, um, trying to enlighten the people of the need to avoid election, the, uh, that violence, the consequences, the disadvantages of going into violence. One is that apart from the person that is involved could get injured, he could lose his eyes, he can lose his hand and all that. It can also spill over to people who are around, which will also, uh, uh, I mean, tend towards uh, damaging buildings. You know, it can come in form of arson, it can come in form of uh, fighting with one another, you know, that can cause injury. When you hear what people are saying outside now, you know, what is going on outside now is very risky to stay late. And apart from that, when you see the way to avoid it, it's like when you want to avoid maybe you don't move near all these uh, politicians. By number one, caution yourself, don't receive money. Because by collecting money, you will join all the people. They will ask you to do what you don't supposed to do. In the sense that when they give you money, they will say, yeah, carry gun. This is, um, we are by their children, they are not here. They are outside Nigeria. And it's true now. And to avoid this, not to, it's not that you not come out during the day of election, but don't join those people. Don't join the talks. Like violent at all. But some people like it. You understand me? They will see where trouble is. They see the good put here to make trouble. Even when there is no trouble, you will see some people will go and make trouble. God treat people differently. What you like, I don't like. What I like, you don't like. I don't like fouling. I don't like trouble. Uh, the government has to make sure that the, the law enforcement agency, that they, they try to do their best, you know, and make sure that there's, a, there's peace. And mostly, we have to also... Different stroke for different folk. What some will say, I've got no time for trouble. Others are saying, bring it on, guys. 
I've got the chest to carry it. Well, I'm joined by a, a youth leader in the Christian society, Tamito Pe Aki Liola. Good morning, and thank you for finding time to join us today. Uh, good morning, and thank you very much. It's all right. Well, the, the big question has always been, uh, when will it be the right time for the Nigerian youth to take its leadership position? Many will say, you keep hearing politicians say, youth are the leaders of the future, but they don't seem to leave that position, that leadership role, or that leadership position for the upcoming ones. How prepared do you see Nigerian youth taking up political leadership? Well, um, the Nigerian youth, um, as it is right now, has been cajoled into believing that they can always play the second fiddle at every event, even when it comes to um, politics, sport, because if you look deeply into it, you discover that half of the youth, the population, are youths, and these youths do not even have what it takes to lead themselves because they've been brainwashed into believing that they are nobody. Because um, if you look at the antecedent that happened even before all the old political gimmicks started. They have always been using the youths mm. as guinea pigs. And you see, the, it must come to an end one day. But um, unfortunately, many of the youths are not even saying it. Because checking from the borough statistics, you discover that we have quite a large number of youths living outside their homes. 63% are males okay. that live outside their homes. They have left home at very tender ages. Now, what chances does such a person have? is only dependent on whatever it gets from the streets and these politicians feed from these things so are they really prepared i would tend to say i don't think they are because mm. if they really if they are really prepared then um i think um the youth should re and reposition themselves from the way they are being used presently into taking the lead role mm. Well, let's begin to look at um, the implication of these for the polity at large. For instance, we're talking about a rescheduled election for March 28th and April 11th. Now, most of the political violence that have been recorded, uh, you notice that certain youths have been at the center of it all. The challenge has been to really identify the root cause of such participation in violent processes. There seem to be two uh, school of thoughts here. Some are saying that it has to be because of unemployment in Nigeria. But on the other side, some are saying, whether you're poor or rich, violence is not a function of what you have or what you don't have. Have you been able to identify the real challenges? Well, uh, funny enough, you, you mentioned that because um, I happen to have um, suffered from this election violence and court. Um, it happened just about three weeks ago. There was a rally um, for because um, of the sake of on air. Mm. I would prefer I don't mention the name, the, of the, party. The, the name of the party. But you, 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 you be, you, you'll be lost to find out that a lot of this so-called um, violence are not just. Um, bio, political violence in court is like people making use of the opportunity to rob. Mm. I was caught in the middle of it all. I was robbed. Take, my position was taken away from me. Mm. And a lot of things happened during that period. And you see, it's mostly from the percentage I was talking about. Those that have left home and are on the streets. Mm. They don't even have, they don't have any moral standing. Nothing. All they know, they live by the laws of the streets. So that's how they survive. Mm. That's, how, that's all they know. Now, if we say, if we tie down to poverty, many of these two, um, youths left home as teenagers. So, and many of them, the homes they're coming from, if you check it back, it's not really poverty. Some of them left home for different reasons. So if we tie it down to poverty alone, Yes, poverty is a major factor, but we can't tie it down to poverty alone. We have to look at other things too. Yeah. E.g., education. Many of them are not 
educating. Now, education goes beyond just you just um, passing through school. Your, your mind needs to be enlightened because some people just have a degree. Some even have MSCs and PhDs, but their minds are not enlightened. They refuse to see. It's what they want to see, they see at all times. Mm. At every time they have a position. And that's one thing I've discovered about Nigeria. Nigeria is a very peculiar country where you have um, quite a, um, a large number of our population taking a position even without knowing what costs the event. They take a position immediately. Mm. You tell them, okay, ah, there was fighting happening, say, for example, in Oshudi. And ever takes a position, oh, it must have been led by, I don't know the name of anybody, but led by Mr. X. He's the one. And everybody takes that position, even without finding out what led to it. So you, you discover that over time, because we like taking positions, we already have our mind already made up. made up before even finding out what really is the root cause of these things. Let's look at the impact of our societal values on all of this. You are a youth leader with a particular Christian uh, society or Christian group. There seem to be much more religious activities in Nigeria, including and, you know, bringing the youth together. But from your own personal opinion, has it literally impacted on that societal value for the Nigerian youth? No. The, the politicians have always played the religious card all the time. And they have the um, bishops and the archbishops to dance to the tune because they, 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 they hold the piper. They, they play the tune and, and, and these Christian leaders dance to it. Now, every time they come to church, the messages are already biased because even the leaders themselves have been compromised. Hmm. They've been compromised. A lot of people will doubt way back then we used to have a lot of respect for. Today, we're seeing something different about them. Now, I'm not um, castigating or judging anybody, but we must say the way it is. Many of them have lost the core reasons or the core essence while they are there as spiritual leaders. They've robbed and married and messed up themselves with politicians so much so that at the end of the day, you find out that where, what they preach to the youths of the church does not even hold any water. Because as I said, we always have our mind made up most times, even before we know what happened. We don't bother ourselves to find out, okay, what happened? Mm. We just make up our minds and we stick to it. Mm. So has it really impacted? No. It has, it has um, ad adverse effect negatively mm. because as i said if as a christian leader you 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 mix yourself up or you mess up with politics there is no way you can convince the youths they will always think you're biased mm. you say oh, maybe he doesn't like this man because he's from this part of the country or maybe because um, he doesn't like this person so he's using that as an opportunity to kick against why others might follow hook, line, sinker and say, look, he's, he's telling us the way it is, so let's just go with him. Our society has always frowned at religious leaders being partisan. But what actual role do you see religion or religious leadership playing in partisan politics? Well, in as much as I've said earlier that um, it's bad for them to mess themselves around with politicians, but it's also a very reputable tool to transmitting the needed information when it comes to um, the way the youths are mm. um, and the way the country needs to be shaped, it starts from the church or it starts from these religious gad um, gatherings because they tend to listen to their bishops, their imam and all what's not more than they would even listen at times to their parents. Mm because they believe in these people. That's right. Spiritual leadership has a lot of power. So it can actually push people either to the extreme or 
otherwise. You see, so it has a very integral role. And if done properly on the basis of the truth, please, it has to be on, on the foundation of the truth. Because if you do anything with sentiment, you can never get the necessary... Thus the truth as any political interpretation. Let's break it down now. Between yes. Buhari and Jonathan, do you expect spiritual leadership to define truth to its membership? I believe we should say it the way it is. The facts should be what the truth should be in politics. Let the facts speak for themselves. Hmm. If you say man is um, an extremist, let the facts speak. If you think otherwise and say, no, okay, um, uh, the man has not performed, let's go to the streets and check. The streets should tell us what and what these people have done. Because actually, the street is a scorecard for politicians. They don't have any other place. Not on paper. You, do, you, you don't achieve on paper. You achieve in reality. Let's go to the street. Let's check in the local areas of Lagos and other parts of the country. What have these people done? And let's check their history. Now, these are the things they should bring out as religious leaders. Look, it's no a function of he is a Muslim or he's a Christian. First and foremost, you're a human being. Then the next, you belong to a country. Lastly, you're either a Christian or a Muslim. But actually, we turn the cards when it comes to politics. You're not a human being. You're either a Christian or a Muslim. You belong to Nigeria, then you're a human being. In your own religious constituency, I believe that you have interacted with some Nigerian youths, yes. you know, uh, on a daily basis, so to speak. How would you describe uh, the thinking of an average Nigerian youth, especially as we count down to this rescheduled election, we've seen a lot of um, non-issue based campaigns among the political parties. What's happening with the Nigerian youth? Their minds are already twisted. 16 years and counting. So. Okay. Their mind is already twisted. They don't even know what is the truth anymore. They don't know what are the facts. You talk about issue-based campaign. Um, funny enough, uh, once again, you, you mentioned that because when the ch chats on, on my social media network and we were talking and I was blown away by even when a youth could recognize, yes, this candidate A has not performed. Mm. Um, yes, candidate A has failed on some social responsibilities. Yes, he has failed on this X and Y, but we still want him there. Now, on what grounds? He said, because he's from this part of the country. Okay. He's from this part of the country. Does that have to be the reason why Nigerians should suffer? Do we always have to shoot back and look at tribe? We don't look at tribes when we play football. I don't hear uh, an Osama man not shouting when um, Okocha scores. Uh, I hear everybody shout. It's a goal. Mm. So it's, it's funny, you see. When people come when it comes to politics, then we, we tend to swim and play the religious card and the um, tribal card. We're so quick to put those forward. But when it comes to sports, mm. and even in churches, you go to a church, I, I, I've never gone to any church so far and I've asked my neighbor, what, what part of the country are you from? I just have to just blend in. Uh. And when you get nobody ask me, what part of the country are you from? Uh. So it's, it's, it's very, very painful. Uh. Very painful. Let's also begin to look at the role of that, the, the politics of money play in all of this. Because at one side, we have Nigerian youth on the streets who are quite vulnerable to being used as tools for violence. But on the other side too, there are still some percentage of educated Nigerians who, as you to know the difference between they are right and they are wrong. But then the economic challenges is still very daunting facing them in the face. Uh, do you see, you had one of the people who spoke earlier in that clip talk about not collecting money. 
are the youths also twisted? Because there are political parties who have said, if they give you money, collect it. It was your money that is stole, but vote your conscience. What are your thoughts along that line? Oh, um, I was in Edo State um, two, two years ago. Um, no, sorry, three years ago. And uh, there, was, um, there was a campaign. And um, one of the major things that they, they kept clamoring on was um, it's your money. When they bring it, take it. Now, it all boils down to morals. You don't have to have a billionaire in an account. A man that has a billionaire, when he's poor mentally, mm. would always behave like a poor man. I, I used to work somewhere that um, one of um, my um, line managers then very comfortable but it will still take the pool car and take it home mm. mental poverty it's it's in the mind it's has always been in the mind and it still remains in the mind if they bring two thousand naira or five thousand naira or ten thousand naira to you i don't think that will make you become rich overnight but a situation where we take that and we, we begin to, to use that as a yardstick on like, okay, this is a solution to poverty. It doesn't solve poverty. It doesn't. But is there a possibility that people actually collect the money? Because, you know, it's one thing to see on television that two or three thousand I cannot solve your problem. Yes. But in the reality of things, in a reality where someone doesn't have anything, in real life, I mean, this is not okay. <laughs> imagination yes. now. Yes. And then they brought the cash. Is there also a possibility of collecting the money yeah. and still voting otherwise? Well, I will not subscribe to that. I will tell you there's a very high possibility you might want to collect this money. But even at the same time, when you collect this money, mm. does your conscience not prick you? Does your conscience not prick you? Now, when you take this money from these politicians and you say, oh, um, yes, I, I got my money because it's part of the national cake in quotes. Mm. Uh, let, let me take my own chunk out of it. Mm. I don't know when it's going to reach me. They should not forget. Mm. As you take this money from these people, these same people you're taking money from got the money from somewhere. And many of them either took a loan or a facility to run this election or the campaign. When they get into office and they don't perform, they should not hold that same person. Because you're taking your share of the national cake. Mm. So yes, it's very, very possible in the reality of things. You might want to take the money, 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira. But as I've said before, and I'm still saying, it does not solve your problem. The best it can give you is a bag of rice. The religious organizations emphasize this fact for the Nigerian youth to see. Now, that is the painful part. The religious organizations don't do that. They don't. Instead, they, they play the um, card of, this is our own. Let us support him. Mm. Now, on what basis? On what basis? A man that doesn't even have any pedigree. We keep following these people. And you see, once um, the tights are, are heavy, the bishop sees, look, see, um, looks at the ministry as growing. The tights are heavy. Um, the church can pay, foot his bills, acquire more land, move from, um, according to a communion friend of mine, he said, when your, your church is... Um, is still at uh, a an headquarters. I don't go to a camp. Then you are you are not you've not your ministry is not growing. So they want to move from headquarters to a camp where you can call it kilometer seven to fifty. You know those kind of things. You those those are the things they want, and they can't get such money from you and I. Maybe you tight you pay maybe fifty thousand tights, maybe forty thousand tights. They can't get such money from you. It doesn't, doesn't make up. A politician that can bring or, um, a politician in quotes that can mm. bring a title of 500 million, mm. 
that they can use in purchasing these properties, mm. they look for them. Mm. I once had um, uh, a man of God once said that this ministry is not growing. Now, I asked him the same question. How is the ministry not growing, sir? He said, we don't have enough political people in our midst. It's not becoming like a market tool, like, you know, that way to sell a church. It's all right. Let's also touch on um, how to ensure, even if it's a short-term solution, because we have elections just a few weeks away now. We have economic challenges, no doubt. And we have youths who are probably vulnerable to be used as tools for violence. How do we ensure that we have a peaceful election before, during, and after the polls? Um, security is number one. Um, number two, we should also look at the long term. Okay. If the um, TV stations and the news media begin to um, speak of the long term goals, it's going to help a lot. The long term goals. It starts with the long term. Because if we are going to go into elections and you're thinking of what I can get now. The now will not work. The long term. And two, we should learn to talk to ourselves. Hmm. Um, what we call, um, there's this thing in marketing, it's called um, door to door, door to door marketing um, hmm. technique. We should do the peace talk door to door. Now, door to door, you don't need to go knock on your neighbor's door, just go to your social media network and preach it. Say it's way it is, no violence, violence free. Now, funny enough, we have almost 40% of Nigerian Jews on a social media network, educated or un uneducated. 40% on one social media network or the other. You have at least minimum of 40% are there. So if you have that kind of statistics going for you, you could use it as a tool to reach people. Mm. A lot of things go viral these days. <clears throat> you say um, um, Bari collapsed somewhere and it goes viral. You say Jonathan um, is in Dubai and the old Nigeria will know in, in, in a very short time, within less than two hours, it has gone viral. In fact, the world can know. So we have these tools to help us hit the violence-free election that we're looking for. Mm. If we maximize or unless the use of social media networks, it's going to help us a whole lot in solving the election problem, violence issues. It's going to help us. Does the basic institution of the family also plays a role in all of this? Of course, we can't rule out the family. That's where education starts from. It starts and ends. Because you start as a child learning. And even when you're married in your home, you're still learning. Because you're learning what your, your kids are saying. You're learning how to become a good father. Mm. You're learning a whole lot of things. Do Nigerian families still talk politics at home? Atan Zeribe once said that um, the Nigerian man mm. is, in quotes, a political animal. So even at home, there's politics. We talk politics all the time. Right. All the time. There's no, you, there's no family you go to, you don't hear some form of politics in, um, uh, Jonathan is good, Barry is good, Jonathan is bad, Barry is bad. It so was that even families can be divided against themselves because of, on, on issues of politics. Mm. Because I know of a family that two um, cousins are going for a political position. And you, <laughs> it's so funny because are, who are they to support? Mm. Who is the family main support? So they have to be divided. So politics, in fact, is in the family. So if you're going to use the family to help um, talk down political violence, it's going to help a whole lot. Mm. Asking the father to talk to the son, the mother talk to the daughter, the son to advise the father, 
and also the daughter to advise the mother because that's where it starts and ends because if you even look at the senate many of them are all of them i think are married so and they have children at least i can speak for um eighty percent of them have kids of their own they should be able to talk to their parents and look if this country breaks up we have no other it can't be two Nigeria. We have just one Nigeria. So, with the rates at which they are pushing it. Most importantly, also, would be uh, helping the Nigerian youth to identify what way to go, especially during an election year. Unfortunately, we've not really had a political atmosphere that has discussed issues, so to speak. So uh, is it a hopeless situation for this team and young Nigerians to be able to genuinely identify uh, who to vote for specifically? No. It's How not do they hopeless, achieve that? It's not a hopeless situation. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a very hopeful situation because we have... Um, people like you and a whole lot of people out there talking. Once the youth leaders don't keep quiet and they keep talking, even despite <clears throat> what I faced um, barely three weeks ago, I'm still here, I'm talking. So a lot of people are ready to talk and preach the peace to, so that we all, because I'm not gonna gain anything I don't have any investment in Ghana. I don't have any investment in Sierra Leone. Uh. So I don't even have anywhere to run to. I only have Nigeria. So if they push Nigeria and it goes on the fire, so who, who's going to lose? I see. Tell me talk about Akin Uliolu. Akin Uliola. Akin Uliola is the youth leader of our Christian community. Thank you very much for joining us today yeah. on Cold Ideas. The bottom line is that... Um, the future of Nigeria, no doubt, is bright, but you and I are midwives, and Nigerian youth must stand up at this time for non-violence before, during, and after the election. And we must also be uh, very, very proactive, participating in this process that will usher in another new political dispensation for our dear country, Nigeria. We'll take a break now, and we'll be back with more. Stay with us. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr.